Hey guys, it's Teacher Dad. In my physics class, we've been talking about vacuums and pressure and so on, and I decided to try to work on an experiment with them to try to help them to get interested and excited about the concept. I had previously followed a YouTube channel called um, Nighthawk in Light, and so he has done some work with some vacuum cannons, and so I was pretty excited about all the different work that he had done, and so I decided that I would try to model some of what he had done and build one of the designs. So you can see the design that I decided to choose here, and it's the design based on a vacuum cannon that is without any type of uh, other machinery or vacuum pumps required, and so it makes it really easy to try to go out and do some fun projects with. So we'll show you some of the build process as well as some of the results and some other information that we found out along the way. You have a two inch PVC, this is an eight foot piece, and it's um, the Schedule 40, so it's pressure rated. You need to make sure that you have the pressure rated kind, not just the Schedule 20, which is a lot thinner walls. So on the inside, you're going to use a piston that's made out of an inch and a quarter PVC. So the inch and a quarter PVC is on the inside. You'll glue an inch and a quarter end cap onto the end. You need to have an O-ring that is an inside diameter of inch and five eighths and an outside diameter of two inches so that it makes a nice seal inside. So the ones that I tried first didn't work as well. These I ended up ordering on Amazon. So I'll put a link down in the description for those as well. These from that company, you were able to specify all of the dimensions that you wanted, the inside diameter, the outside diameter, the thickness, and so on. So you take an end cap, an O-ring, and then you put your, you take a coupling, you glue that in place so it squeezes up against the O-ring and makes a nice seal on either side. So put another piece of inch and a quarter pipe inside here add another O-ring, and then glue another piece of the coupling on the back. So the design of the piston is an inch and a quarter end cap uh, onto a piece of pipe, then an O-ring, then a piece of coupling, then another O-ring, a piece of coupling, and then a little piece here at the back so that you can attach something to pull the piston through the two inch piece of PVC pipe. Now, the projectile in this case was a another inch and a quarter end cap. And basically what you do is you just kind of stick this here on the end and put a little piece of duct tape, just a thin strip on two sides. And that's just hold to hold the end cap until the PVC gets all the way down through to the other end. Another little tip here is that uh, if you use a metal carabiner as they, as they do on the other YouTube channel, you can use a really strong magnet and you can pull it through the PVC and shoot it out the other end so that you have the ability to uh, reload this much more quickly and easily. So the way that you seal off the end of the piston so that you can create a vacuum inside when you pull the piston through is that over here on this end, I have a two by two rubber gasket or rubber connector that seals onto the end of the PVC with a clamp. And so these little plastic clear solo cups are very lightweight and they work very fairly well. So when this is pressed inside, it's strong enough to pull a vacuum and it's also thin enough and light enough so that if it does get hit by the projectile, it doesn't cause much of a distraction. It doesn't cause much of a disruption of the velocity of the, of the object. So what happens then is you will pull the vacuum and by pulling the piston out through the other end, this needs to happen as quickly as you can because the faster that you can remove the piston in one, in one smooth motion, the faster the atmospheric pressure can push in on the piston and pull the uh, tape off the end of your projectile, causing that to be pushed out through the other end and whatever you're aiming at. So the first couple of times that we did some of these tests, you can see here that we shot a couple different objects. I'll show you some of these in slow motion and they uh, look pretty neat. We shot an, an aluminum can. Uh, you can see here shooting an aluminum can. Um, one of the unique things about the aluminum can was that it was traveling so fast that there are little letters on the front of the PVC end cap and it actually embossed those little letters right into the aluminum can. We used a two liter bottle that was topped off or that was screwed off and capped off so it would have created 
a lot more pressure and a lot more force required to break that object. So we also shot a couple other items just for the fun of it. We used uh, some some uh, oobleck or some slime kind of mix, and so we mixed the, the borax and the white glue, added some food coloring, and then I also took a plastic water bottle and I mixed up some plaster of Paris. So the first time that we shot it, it basically made a big indentation and kind of ripped a big chunk out of it. The plastic on the PV on the bottle kind of helped to keep things more in place. So once we did it that first time, then I peeled the plastic bottle off and we shot just the plaster of Paris the second time. And the second time it was much more interesting. You can see how it uh, just obliterated the uh, plaster of Paris. And so what we decided is I wanted to find out how fast was this actually moving. And so we did this in a couple different ways. First of all, with this being my physics class, I wanted them to understand the principles behind physics and how you can use various formulas and things to calculate speeds and velocities and things like that. So what we did is we used my Galaxy S10 Plus and we recorded on 960 frames per second. So what that does is it gives you a time frame and you're using 960th of one second. And so then what we did is we measured the distance between the end of the PVC pipe and the, the uh, can that we were trying to shoot at. And then on the computer, what you can do is you can slow down the frames and you can advance the video one frame at a time. So you can see there are about seven frames from the time that it leaves the end of the PVC pipe until the time that it hits the can. So that means you have about seven 960ths of a second. The distance between the can and the end of the PVC pipe was about 25 inches. So now you have a basic math or algebraic equation. So we did that and we found out that the projectile or the end cap was traveling at a speed of around 190 miles per hour. And so I wanted to verify and find out if our math and our computer anal analysis was correct. And so I borrowed a device from my father, which is called a chronograph. So what we did is we used that device and we found out that the uh, end cap was traveling at 266 feet per second. When you calculate that over into miles per hour, it equates to around 181 miles per hour. And so uh, very, very close to what we had calculated mathematically. The other thing that we decided to do then is uh, I couldn't find a watermelon. It's not in the right season. And so we had a pumpkin because this was right around Thanksgiving. And so I decided to try that out. And one of my students brought that in. So you can see some of the test results here. <laughs> The students really enjoyed it, and I had a number of adults who work at my school who are saying, man, I wish I was back in physics class uh, in school and having so much fun. I love to employ uh, fun and learning in the process, and so hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, you can put them down in the description. Also, you can head over to Nighthawk and Light, his channel, where he does a more detailed build, and he has some more information about this. So uh, giving a shout out to him, I had contacted him about some questions that I had, and I'll be sending him a copy of this video as well. So hopefully enjoy that, and we'll see you again on the next one.